I wanted to make another video about game reviews. Hi, this is Jake, your resident content cowboy here, yeehaw. And today I wanted to talk to you about the idea of a 10 as a game review. I've done this before with the game Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and I think it really, really works for Cyberpunk 2077 as well. This is going to be a series called, Who Could Give This Game a 10? And now we're talking about Cyberpunk. If you know anything about games, you know everything about what's going on with Cyberpunk. It is one of the worst game launches that I think has ever existed. It is going to be a story that is told forever and something that future game releases are all compared to. Well, at least it wasn't as bad as Cyberpunk. Wow, this is almost as bad as Cyberpunk. Things like that will be said. Let me be clear about how I feel about the game before I hop into this. I'm not here just to make a video trashing Cyberpunk. I've played a decent amount of Cyberpunk. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I absolutely don't think it's a 10. I think a 10 is a weird score in general because... I don't know. How do you give a game a score? I think we go down a bigger rabbit hole with that, but let's just say you can give a game a 10. I guess I could see a world where maybe someone would give Cyberpunk a 10, but I just don't understand how these reviewers could really write reviews like this. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Who could possibly give this game a 10? Why did this happen? How did this happen? And what does the future look like for game reviews? And I think we're already seeing what the future looks like for game reviews, <clears throat> which is a wasteland because they can't be trusted. Let's take a look at this game review right here from Games Radar. This gave this game a perfect score. Pros, most immersive game world to date. I don't think that's true I, I it could be your opinion fine I, I mean I don't think it's as immersive as even their previous game The Witcher 3 if you're just comparing it directly to one of their games not to mention the tons of other games out there although I do think Night City is cool absolutely gorgeous okay we'll talk about this in a moment freedom of choice in story and combat I agree there is a nice freedom of choice in combat and yes somewhat in the story i haven't got to some of the bigger choices so i'll say that that seems totally fine shorter than expected as a con yeah i you know they did talk about this game being 170 hours long or something like that i think most immersive game world to date is bizarre and absolutely gorgeous this is one of the tough ones so as you know this game was subject to a review embargo and this gets us a little bit over to the how did this happen Cyberpunk 2077 reviewers weren't allowed to use their own gameplay footage. Not only that, they weren't allowed to play it on anything other than a high-end PC. They weren't even shown it on other consoles. Here is where I think Cyberpunk, its developer, the executives in charge of this, because clearly the executives from this company, I mean, they're involved in a class action lawsuit right now because of all this. Clearly, they knew what they were doing, and they were setting this up so that no one could notice how bad this game looked. And I blame CD Projekt Red for this. Obviously, it was their decision. As you can read a little bit in this article, uh, others simply went with impressions-based posts or videos instead of review scores. All were based on the game's PC build, while questions about the console versions remain mysteriously unanswered. This isn't all the weirdness that's going around, however. And then they keep talking about what's going on with uh, SkillUp wanted to release their Cyberpunk review, but CDPR's embargo required that they use only recorded gameplay. I... I've seen when things like this happen. I know when The Last of Us 2 came out, they had a similar situation where they didn't want anyone talking about Abby, basically. Because if you found out about Abby, you'd know a lot about the plot, and you might not want to buy the game if you found out about Abby. I remember this happening with Assassin's Creed as well, before everyone knew about the whatever it is, the Animus and Abstergo and all that. They tried to hide the fact that there was a sort of meta game going on with Assassin's Creed. So CD Projekt Red did this on purpose. And because of that, you see reviews that read like this in such a bizarre way. 
Uh, this they think Blade Runner is one of the best films of the year. They also say that the vid- this video game is the game of the decade and stuff like that. Uh, they talked about a developer who'd been playing Cyberpunk for 170 hours and still wasn't finished. We scoffed at this at first, but now we fully understand why they spent so long in this world. It's weird because I think what happened here is to get access to this game, everyone basically signed a deal with the devil. They basically said, oh, if you give me access to this game, I will agree to only play it in the specific way you want. I won't post videos of my gameplay experience. I won't really talk about bugs, and I won't let them affect my review. That's basically what happened. I still have huge issues with just even some of the things being said. People talk about this game. When you read these, it's crazy. Cyberpunk has managed to do justice to the hype level it created. What? We cannot ignore the large number of bugs. I don't know. That's a perfect score right there. Nevertheless, CD Projekt Red created the most detailed urban settings we've ever seen with a cyberpunk aesthetic that's beyond match. I think there's some amazing aesthetics and stuff in this game. It doesn't even feel that cyberpunk at times, but fine. All in all, it's a masterpiece. It's a fantastic game that we've never experienced before. That's not even true. I mean, let's be real about what this game is. It's kind of a looter shooter, first person cyberpunk game. It has elements of a a GTA a little bit. It has some RPG elements. This is kind of similar to a Deus Ex game in some ways, but it's more like GTA meets Deus Ex. I I don't know what to say about this. Also, a lot of these happen to be from uh, foreign publications. I'm here in the United States of America. And I don't mean to say that in any way saying that they have worse opinions, but I'm wondering if my theory on a place wanting to be able to provide coverage of this game so badly influenced their review in such a distinct way. But then again, these uh, outlets could get coverage on all these games all the time. I really don't know. All I know is when you read these 100 reviews, you just think, This is crazy. It's just crazy reading them. An immersively stunning and crafted RPG, which raised the bar for cinematic quality open world games. Just be aware of the bugs at release. 100. 10 out of 10. Cyberpunk isn't perfect. Well, that's a perfect score, game spew. But it is ambitious. It marries a gripping story with a huge open world, dripping with atmosphere. One in which, after 50 hours of gameplay, I still feel like I've only scratched the surface. (sighs) You know, one of the toughest things... A 98? Dude, just give it a 100, Hobby. Come on, buddy. 95? Come on, just give it a 100. I I guess my big thought here is... Reviews are kind of dead, right? I mean, if this game is a perfect score, what is the point of looking at these reviews anymore? It means nothing. It hasn't meant something for so long. They've been on a 7 to 10 scale forever. But I just don't understand how so many reviewers agreed to this. And I guess that's the part I take issue with when it comes to the reviewers. Cyberpunk orchestrated this. But I can't believe so many people went along with it. That's the most disappointing part. And that's the most bizarre reason that this game got a 10 or a perfect score is that they went along with CD Projekt Red telling them how they had to play it purposefully hiding the game from people almost telling them what to write in the review I mean I'm being honest here that's basically what happened now do I think this game is the absolute worst thing ever no I just think the release is a disaster and I think what it did for game reviews if you're smart You probably don't really read these anyway. But don't look at a score on a box. Don't look at a score when they're talking about what's going on with a new game. These people were all tricked. They were all tricked by this game. And the few outlets that weren't tricked by it, I think you should applaud them. I really do. But everyone else, I don't know, man. If you gave this game a perfect score, I don't think you can be trusted. At least until you come out and explain 
what happened and how you won't do it again. I hope you enjoyed this video, this little roundup of these reviews, and another installment of how could this game get a 10. I'm Jake, your resident content cowboy. Saying goodbye. Mwah!